Next, I'd like to introduce Brad Lomberger, who's been a professional software dev since 2001. He's one of Batovi's awesome JavaScript developers, and he's had a long time interest in Canvas as a tool for extending what a web page can do. Today, he's going to explain some of the limitations of HTML5's native drag and drop API and how you can re implement drag and drop in your app to build features such as seamlessly dragging things from HTML to a Canvas context. Demo's really cool. I'm really excited for his talk. Hi, everyone. I um, want to talk a bit today about drag and drop. So I'm going to actually jump right into it, and we're going to have demo time. Uh, this should be something that makes everybody uh, a little bit nostalgic for their childhoods. Um, this, as you might imagine, is a Mr. Potato Head. This is a Mr. Potato Head body. It's got arms and feet and a hat. It doesn't have the other things that would usually make up a Mr. Potato Head head, uh, but they're over here in our shape inventory. Now this, Mr. Potato Head, is actually implemented in Fabric. It's a little uh, thing that I can move around and rotate and things, and it's all drawn on a canvas. This is a surprisingly difficult thing if you want to take uh, images over here and drag them in, but let me show you what I've got. Right now, I'm actually dragging on Mr. Potato Head's eyes uh, from our shape inventory, and I'm going to drag them in to our Fabric canvas. And ta-da, our Potato Head's got eyes. And let's do the same thing for nose. He's got a nose and teeth. Hmm, those teeth are a little small, so let's move them up to a slightly larger size here. And these handles are very hard to hit. There we go. There we go. He's got bigger teeth. Now let's actually draw in a couple more noses, and we can rotate them and turn them into ears. Mr. Potato Head is now wearing Beats by Dre. Look at those cans. All right. Uh, so I just wanted to show you one other thing, though. I'm going to this time go from the inventory through the canvas and back out the other side and drop here where there's no drop target and nothing happens. Um, this is a little thing that I wanted to mention uh, as I get into this. So this may not actually seem all that impressive at the moment, but I wanted to actually talk about this because what it's not doing is using the native HTML drag and drop API. And there's some good reasons for that. So let's actually talk a little bit about um, the native API in HTML DOM. There's a DOM API for dragging and dropping items. Um, but security is a concern because drag and drop is reused for two kind of different use cases. One is dragging files into a page, and the other one is for dragging elements around a page. Um, and those can be images and they can be other things, but primarily because there's stuff coming in from your operating system, perhaps local files, um, it is a real security nightmare if you just let anybody read off that data anytime. Um, so as a result, it's a very restrictive API. So in addition to that, um, not to call anybody out, but this API was actually originally developed by Microsoft during the bad old uh, Internet Explorer era. So there's some interesting things that happen during the life cycle. So first of all, when you click, hold, and drag on an item, there is a drag event fired, right? So this is just a regular uh, DOM event. But if you wanted to do a custom drag rather than the normal thing, you prevent the default on this handler. That's weird. Um, now, when you drag on the source element, uh, after the drag, you get a drag start. Now, this is the only time that you get to actually set data on your, uh, on your drag elements. Then, of course, you get a little floater on your pointer, and you can move it around, and you can hover over drop targets. How do you know something's a drop target? Well, when you fire the drag over event on it, it prevents default. Yes, this is a real thing. And finally, when you let go of the mouse, you can drop on a thing and perform some sort of operation um, that you keeping the data transfer. And the original target actually gets notified using the drag end uh, event that the drag, the drag operation is over. All right, so that's really the long and the short of it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different uh, events, uh, about half of which just happened in the middle of the life cycle. The others happen at the beginning and the end. So to share the data between the source at drag start 
and the target at drop, there's something called the data transfer object. Now, it has a very strict policy about when data can be read or written. I think we, we talked about this. It happens only on drag start, right? So on drag start, you can set data. Um, at any other time, you can actually change the drag image and this one string with pretty restrictive uh, values called drop effect. So you could actually say, oh, at any time, like, oh, I'm gonna change this from like a move operation to a copy operation to no operation. And once the data is set into the, the data transfer, you can only read it out again when you drop. So you might be asking, is this enough for what we might wanna do for a, a web application? Um, I mean, first of all, I would say still continue to use the native API if you're only, if you're dragging in stuff from outside. Uh, don't try and reinvent the wheel. And I don't think it, it would even be that possible to do so um, for things that come from outside of the page. But if you're only dragging things around inside a page, that security aspect isn't quite as important because that data is already kicking around somewhere in your contexts, in your window objects. Um, and the data transfer in native APIs only will take strings and blobs. So if you want to take JavaScript objects, if you want to take certain class instances, things with functions, things that are bound to other, uh, you know, other data elsewhere, uh, you're kind of SOL uh, in, the, in the native thing. So we would probably want to do something a little bit richer for data. Um, and of course, if you want to do anything interesting while you're still in the middle of a drag process, uh, especially considering the kind of data you want to drag around, native API is not going to let you do that. So there's a good reason there to reimplement things. Uh, and Canvas is actually a really good reason for this, for uh, reasons that I, I think I pretty well demonstrated in the demo. So if we want to simulate a drag and drop operation, you'd have to do a start. So move, you know, We'll touch down on, on a mouse down, move five pixels, or leave the boundary of the drag target. So that is roughly the same thing as like click and move without leaving, um, without taking the mouse button up. So if you start that on a draggable target, you could consider that a drag easily. Um, so we wanna sort of replicate this idea of like having a little floating element that follows along with the mouse pointer to show what's moving around with it. So we'll make a little floater. To end the drag, Anytime the mouse button is up, the drag is done. I mean, that's pretty easy, uh, pretty straightforward, right? Now, that, that may or may not come with a drop because there could be a, a drop target, there could be no drop target. Um, but at the same time, it really just, the only thing that matters is, is something listening to the drop event that gets fired. So if there is one, trigger it, and then go back to the original drag target and just say, all right, we've ended the drag. And then in the middle, on mouse center, you can fire drag enter. On mouse leave, fire drag leave. On mouse move, fire drag over. So pretty close to the mouse operations already, except that they're only happening in the context of uh, this sort of like simulated click and drag that we're doing. Now, that sounds very easy. Like, it's just take some, nat some native DOM events and fire some other synthetic DOM events. But there's some pitfalls. Um, first of all, images actually are always natively draggable by default. So if you click and drag on an image, even though it might be within your simulated drag target, it's still going to do the, it's still going to do the native image drag rather than the synthetic one. Um, if user releases the mouse button outside of the window, you have no way of knowing this. Uh, the mouse pointer re-enters, you'll still be doing the drag operation even though the mouse button's up. That's not desirable behavior. You might not even know when a drag starts, uh, other than having like a pretty well-defined way of doing that. We did cover that in the previous slide. Um, and finally, mobile browsers complicate the heck out of this uh, because by default, there are no mouse events. There are multi-touch screens. So you wanna have the right number of fingers down on your screen to do drag correctly. But the nice thing is I wrote a library and I, it's called Advanced Draggable and I have already solved all of these problems. So, uh, if you go to GitHub, there's a, th this repository already exists. It's called Advanced Draggable. Uh, has no external dependencies. It's pure JS and DOM. It's published on NPM at this point at version one. 
but we can talk about this more at, uh, at any time I'm around. Uh, go to the Toby Community Slack, join the channel JS and Dom. Um, and I would just like to leave you with this because I am giving this out to the community. Um, so here's a little koan from the jargon file. It says, a disciple of another sect once came to Drescher as he was eating his morning meal. I would like to give you this personality test, said the outsider, because I want you to be happy. Drescher took the paper that was offered him and put it into the toaster saying, I wish the toaster to be happy too. And that's my talk. Thank you, Brad. That, that was fantastic. Um, does anyone have any questions for Brad? If not, I have a question. How did you, uh, without going too far down the rabbit hole, how did you solve the problem of when the user uh, moves their mouse outside of the window and releases? How do you handle that correctly when they bring the mouse back in? There's a the TLDR of that. Yeah. You, what you do is you put a capture phase mouse enter listener on the document. So if it comes back, uh, if the pointer comes back into the, um, uh, it, the pointer comes back into the page, then that gets fired first, and you just check whether or not the um, the buttons are up because the uh, the mouse event will come with uh, like a a data element that tells you what the what mouse buttons are currently down. If they're up, or, or especially if the left mouse button is up, you just end the drag period. So as you're coming back in, maybe you'd see like a little flash, but really in my experience, it's like as the pointer comes back in, the drag floater goes away and you're all set. Yeah, makes sense. Cool.